Outline 8, Roman numeral number 4. <clears throat> Quantum mechanics tells us about the location of the electrons in the atom. Uh, Schrodinger's equation allows us to calculate the probability of finding an electron with a particular amount of energy at a particular location in the atom. So uh, we will only be looking at the results or the solutions of Schrodinger's equation uh, and a couple layers removed uh, after they've been solved to tell us what orbitals are. Uh, but uh, So we don't have to know really anything about the Schrodinger equation. Solving it does involve uh, very complex math well beyond general chemistry level. Uh, the only thing I will tell you, psi here is the electron probability wave function. Uh, and the solutions to Schrodinger's equation give four quantum numbers that define orbitals that the electrons are in. We will look at a summary of what the quantum numbers tell us because they will tell us all about the orbitals. Now, um, what is an orbital? Well, each orbital is defined as the volume of space in which there is a 90% probability of finding the electron. a 90% probability of finding the electron. Why not 100%? Well, the short answer is two short answers. <laughs> uh, well, maybe not that short. One, the definition given here for an orbital tends to agree at least approximately with the size of how orbitals and atoms act. And then the other thing is, the, be, due to the nature of these kinds of calculations, if you wanted to include 100% of the probability, you would have to do integration over uh, volume of space from zero to infinity, which is not practically useful. So there's uh, first thing is we have to know this definition. This comes up frequently uh, on exams and homework assignments. And, um, but then the reasons why, principally because that's how big the atom acts or the orbital acts. Okay, so the principal quantum number n describes the main energy level or shell that an electron occupies. The principal energy levels are very similar to the Bohr energy levels. Uh, although we're gonna talk about two different aspects of the principal energy levels. So I'm gonna divide my page in half here. And first I'm gonna talk about the size of the uh, principal energy levels or the main energy levels. Uh, And the size of the main energy levels varies as n squared. And what I mean by that is if I draw a dot for the nucleus and then I draw n equals one and I'm gonna draw it pretty tiny here, uh, that's n equals one. That means that n equals two is four times as big That's what n squared means. Two squared is four. N equals three. Nine times as big, and I should say nine times as big as n equals one. And, um, we're out of space for n values right now. Uh, so, uh, but you should know that 
there are n equals 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And in fact, one thing yeah, that comes out of the Schrodinger equation and its solutions is that n does go to infinity. There are an infinite number of n values possible. Okay. Now, that's the size of the main energy levels uh, or the values for n. And it looks a lot like the Bohr atom uh, with this spacing uh, consideration thrown in. So as you go from n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way out to infinity, the, the energy, the n value gets higher. Now on this side, I'd like to talk about the energy of main energy uh, of the uh, main energy levels. And we talked about the equation that describes the energy of the main energy levels before. Uh, so the main energy energy of the main energy levels varies. as 1 over n squared. So, uh, and a picture of this looks something like this. So if I have my nucleus down here at the bottom, then let's say n equals 1 is right there, then that means that n equals 2 is 1 quarter of this distance. Uh, n equals 3, n equals 4, And the energy levels get closer and closer together. And it gets increasingly difficult to jump from one to another without jumping several at a time. And in fact, as it gets farther and farther out, it gets easier for it to jump to n equals infinity. And we'll put n equals infinity right there, approximately. And n equals infinity is when the electron has left the atom. So if we start with the hydrogen atom, the electron will start in n equals one. Then if it leaves the atom, it will be, uh, the electron will be in n equals infinity. And instead of an H atom, we will have an H plus ion if the electron is left. Okay, so uh, more about these uh, values of N and the in, uh, orbitals, which is where we're working to. For each value of N, there are N sublevels. So here we're going to write uh, N value and then sublevels. So for n equals 1, we will see that there is one sublevel. We will come to know that as the S sublevel. So, and then for n equals 2, there will be S and P sublevels, n equals 3, S, P, and D, 4, S, P, D, and F, 5. Well, we will see that the S, P, D, and F sublevels are all the levels we need to describe all the atoms on the current periodic table. However, after F, it does go alphabetically, F, G, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. According to Schrodinger's equation, there are uh, more. There are an infinite number of sublevels as well. S sublevels look like spheres. So uh, here's a 1s uh, sublevel, or let's say this. Um, and a 1s sublevel will contain one orbital. You will uh, be potentially asked to draw s uh, sublevels. Here is what you would draw, a sphere centered on the uh, uh, axes, x and y axes, 
where the dot in the middle is always the nucleus. Now, a circle is fine to approximate a sphere uh, if you wanted to actually make it look a little bit three-dimensional you could add in those parts as well, but circles are fine to represent spheres as far as we're going. Um, good. P sublevels are, let's say, P sublevels have orbitals that look like dumbbells. And a P sublevel will have three orbitals. A P sublevel will have three orbitals. And as an example, we'll look at the two P sublevel. It has 2px, 2py, and 2pz orbitals. Um, within those, let me draw each of those for you. Again, Saturn on the nucleus. Uh, they will look like dumbbells. Some version of this. Oop where that's half of it. There's the other half. And the key thing is here, they look somewhat like inflated balloons, two of them to make up one orbital. I'm defining this as the x-axis and the y-axis, and 2px will be along the x-axis. Okay, so two pieces to one orbital. And this part right here, along the y-axis, but since there is a z-dimension, it is called the yz plane, is a node. And I will now define node. A node is a surface uh, for which there is zero probability of finding the uh, electron. a surface with zero probability of finding the electron. And let's just check in with what an orbital is again. An orbital is the volume of space, and these are three-dimensional. Uh, we don't always draw it like this. These are three-dimensional uh, dumbbell shapes, um, but again, uh, a dumbbell or a flat representation is fine. So, um, yes, and there's a node here. What we will notice about nodes is that as you go from S to P to D to F, there will be more nodes, and as you go from N equals 1 to N equals 2 to N equals 3 to N equals 4, etc., there will be more nodes as well. So in each type of complexity, n value and sublevel, there will be more nodes. What do you have to know about nodes? You have to know they exist. You have to know what they are. So you have to know their definition. And you have to be able to point to at least some of them. Um, and so this one here uh, is a node in a p orbital. That's 2px, let's do 2py and 2pz. They will be the same things, meaning the same shapes, except along each of their respective axes. Two py, again, uh, balloon or dumbbell shaped, but along the y axis. Uh, and that x and y, those are subscripts, so it's 2p subscript x. Again, not that I care too much. Uh, 2pz, well, there's a couple ways. 
to do it. I'm going to do it as if it's a third axis on my X and Y. And again, not touching. Now, uh, this line is thickening as it gets closer to you. Um, and so, because as things get closer to you, they get bigger. As things get farther, farther from you, they get smaller. Uh, and as things are underneath the paper, at least in this simple representation of how to do three dimensions in a two-dimensional page, things below the paper are dashed. And they should be equal size there. Got a little carried away. It should be, if anything, a little smaller since it's farther away. That's a reasonable represent representation of 2PZ. Um, now, drawing the nodes in here, which, oh, and in this case, it would be really hard to draw the node, but the node is the XY plane. Here, it is the XZ plane. And those are our P orbitals. So a P sublevel will have three orbitals. One, two, three. Uh, D and F sublevels look increasingly complicated. A D sublevel has one, two, three, four, five orbitals. And whereas an S orbital has one area, a P orbital has two parts, a D orbital has four parts, or if it has three parts, it's equivalent in complexity to something that has four parts because they're complicated three parts. You don't have to know these designations, if you can even read them anyway. Uh, you don't have to know how to draw D orbitals. You just have to be able to tell an S, a P, or for Ds, you have to be able to tell a D when you see it. I won't ask you to draw them. Similar thing for F, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, F sublevel has seven orbitals. And um, those seven orbitals have eight parts. So we went one to two to four to eight and if they don't have eight parts, they have fewer but increasingly complicated parts. Um, though my favorite parts to all the Fs and the Ds are the donut shapes. Again, you should know how to recognize a picture, say, on your uh, third exam of, uh, if I show you this picture, or probably this picture actually, can you identify it as an F orbital? I won't ask you to draw it. Now, the relationship between 1s, 2s, and 3s, these are going to look exactly like the n equals 1, 2, 3 picture that I've drawn for you before. When you draw it for me, the key is that you know that they get bigger as they go. It is true that 1s to 2s to 3s, they get bigger as the square of the number, but as long as you draw... increasing sized circles representing increasing sized spheres, thumbs up for me. Um, now the relationship between 2s and 2p, this is important. So 2s and 2p are two ways to put electrons in the same volume of space. So a 2s and a 2p in our drawings will end at the same place. So I'm gonna do my drawing over here going to make it about as big, uh, well, let's see, so that's 2s, 2s is a sphere, um, and then inside that I'll do, I'll start with 2px, I'll probably just draw 2px, because otherwise it gets increasingly complicated. So there's 2px, and the point I'm making is 
they end at the same space. So um, because 2, n equals 2, 2s two is four times bigger than 1s, there are more ways to put electrons into the uh, n equals 2 main energy level. So we'll put, um, we'll see there's an orbital here, and then we'll break uh, that up into other portions where we can put more electrons. Another uh, part that becomes important later on uh, when we talk about molecular orbital theory is that p and d orbitals have lobes with different phases. Remember, electrons are uh, now represented by wave functions. Wave functions similar to regular waves. And that's a picture of a regular wave. Regular waves have what we can define as positive and negative parts. If we turn it upside down, we could also call this positive and this negative. It doesn't matter which way we go, just there's a top and a bottom. And those two should be the same size. If I draw 2px, we will also be able to identify a positive and a negative phase for the two parts of the p orbital. And similarly for the d orbital. Um, but the most we will do when we talk about molecular orbitals is deal with p orbitals and their phases. So they do have different phases uh, just uh, due to their uh, wave-like nature. Now, uh, we've shown how p orbitals have uh, nodes, and I said that as you go from n equals 1 to n equals 2 to n equals 3, they also have nodes. These nodes are going to be spherical nodes. And in uh, a 2s orbital, the spherical node is approximately where the, the, there is the highest probability of finding the 1s electron. So this is a spherical node uh, in 2s where there is the highest probability of finding the 1s electron. Similarly, in 3s, there's a node where you can find the highest probability of the 1s electron and the highest probability of the 2s electron. These are what orbitals look like. We'll talk about in our next lecture outline how to actually put electrons in these orbitals.